Hello guys, a uh, very exciting day today because today is a day I get my delivery of Sony's A7R3 uh, that I ordered uh, last week. Um, the reason I got the A7R3 is because they were running a promotion for month of March. I get $300 off brand new A7R3 from B&H and uh, because I had a treating which was my old camera that I used for my photography um, with that treating I get $300 credit which I used to purchase the a7r3 um, and uh, I also pre-ordered the a7 III which is supposed to come out sometime next week and ship to me um, so that I was also quite excited but now it's actually the first time I'm uh, holding a full frame. I'm I will be holding a full frame Sony, uh, mirrorless, um, full frame camera. And uh, along with the camera, I also bought a few other accessories. As you can see, I have the slide light from Peak Design. Um, I did a review of the uh, the actual original slide, uh, and this is the version three of it from Peak Design uh, for my big DSR Nikons um, and I didn't know I was about to um, uh, get the Sony this quick but uh, uh, since I ordered a extra A7R3 um, besides my A7 III pre-order uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the unboxing for that one as well and as you can see I also have the Sony FE 12-24 F4G which I will be using for interior shots for my real estate photography. Uh, along with it, a FE 90mm f2.8 macro G O S S. That's a mouthful. Um, that will be mainly used for product photography uh, on the tabletop. And along with that, a standard Sony FE 50mm f1.8, which is a standard that everybody should have in their kit lens setup. Um, now there's actually a few more lenses that I pre-ordered uh, from Sigma Art Series which haven't come. Uh, I believe the Sigma lens is going to come right after the Sony a7 III arrives to me. So I'm going to do those Sigma lens unboxing um, later on when my a7 III camera arrives. Uh, but for now, the a7 R3, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, also, um, I bought a additional battery. The, I think NZ100 or something like that, um, just as a backup. But from what I heard, the battery in the A7R3 is excellent. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, actually unbox the um, A7R3 first. I'm gonna put all the other lenses aside. And by the way, I'll post the link um, down in the description on where I got all my accessories and gears. So you guys can take a look if you're interested in upgrading into Sony. Um, Again, a little background. Um, I am, I was a Nikon shooter, and uh, I had used almost all kinds of Nikon cameras in the past, the digital ones and the film ones. Um, but now, with the release of the Sony uh, full frame, I feel like maybe it's a time to switch. Okay, I'm gonna move my camera down a little bit um, because what really interested me from the Sony is the. Um, IAF which can be used quite usefully for portrait photography and among other things um, pet photography maybe uh, since we have a lot of cats that we photograph around the house so um, again I just got this uh, probably like 20 minutes ago so I'm doing this unboxing without really checking what's inside so of course opening the box uh, we have a whole bunch of manuals limited warranty I believe it's for one year as you can see and uh, uh, pixel shift I think that's what uh, what Sony uses to uh, actually boost uh, the resolution of the images um, but from the review of a lot of websites that this pixel shift doesn't work as well as the Pentax one so we'll hold that uh, in a review later on uh, right now we're only doing unboxing so the lens and accessories uh, chart, which lists all the stuff that I guess this camera is compatible with, I assume. Um, yeah, anyway, um, 
what's this? Owner's record. So that recorded the model number and serial number. I guess that's for warranty purpose. Okay, put aside. So the actual user manual. Um, I think there's a Spanish, uh, f looks like a French version. So English and um, English version and this, this uh, mm, some other language maybe. Oh, okay. So user manuals aside, and of course, uh, register a digital imaging product for a chance to win a hundred dollar master prepaid card. So basically, go register, um, and maybe you'll get a prepaid card. And uh, I always register my cameras just uh, as a um, safety precaution because they do break. Like uh, my last video, uh, my Nikon. Almost a three thousand dollar, three thousand dollar lens, the seventy to two hundred VR FL, uh, just broke uh, right after uh, a year, and I have to send it in for repair. Uh, thank God I registered for extended warranty, and um, so that aside, uh, looks like a charger cord. It's weird they put the charger cord right over here. Uh, opening up the box. Uh, what's inside very excited of course the camera strap which I will not be using because all the camera straps from camera manufacturers sucks uh, I always use aftermarket one and uh, as I said before I got the um, where is it? I got the slide light from peak design which will work fantastically on this camera all right so we're we'll unbox that later um, okay let's see what's inside what's inside so the actual camera wow this is the first time i'm holding a sony full frame um let's see what other stuff is inside uh, looks like there are some more and maybe the charger so from what i heard the a7 III a pro order doesn't come with a charger only a usb cable i believe and this one the a7r3 actually comes with a charger so it's fantastic because i can use this charger for both cameras uh, how great is that of course more stuff inside the box let's see and the box is now empty put everything aside and i'm going to put the box away so we can take a look at the camera itself Bear with me. Very exciting. Okay, so the camera. Okay, so this is, uh, I don't know what this is for. That looks like a weird thing. Um, okay, so that looks like it's used to attach all different kinds of cables. Um, so they don't, uh, they don't slide around maybe, I assume. Uh, we'll have to take a look in the manual. Sorry, this is, um, it's not my first Sony camera, but uh, it's my first Sony full frame. So a USB 3 cable, right, uh, actually it's a USB-C, type C um, cable, not a 3, it's, it's a technically 3.1. So charger and batteries aside, we we'll keep the battery. So I'm gonna put it in, hopefully it have some juice so I can turn the camera on and take a look. Um, all right. Very exciting, very exciting. So battery's out. So this battery looks as big as a, uh, my Nikon battery. Uh, the Nikon battery is fantastic. They last a super long time. Um, again, I had a Sony before. I had a Sony A6300 and that one, the battery sucks. It dies super quick and it's a tiny battery. And this one is as big as my Nikon or almost as big. Compare the size. So it's slightly, uh, I would say it's almost exactly the same size. Actually, slightly larger. Um, quite interesting. So this battery supposedly should last me a while, which is great. All right, camera, camera, right over here. I'm gonna do some close up of the camera itself. Oh, and I almost forgot. I actually have something. I need to grab it. Some aftermarket part, and uh, this is the uh, lens uh, lens protector. It's made of glass. I bought it on Amazon. It's super cheap, about nine dollars shipped. 
uh, it comes with two. So I can use one for my A7R3 and one for my A7 III that's gonna come. So uh, maybe I'll install this protector in a little bit. Okay, so first thing first, take a overview of the camera. It feels slightly larger than my old A6300. Um, quite interesting. The, it, feels, it feels very solid uh, in my hand. Actually, it feels quite quite lighter than my Nikon DSLRs, which, let's see if I can do a quick comparison. Right. My Nikon is right over here. The Nikon feels substantial, while the Sony grip just, it feels about right. It feels smaller, but it feels about right. It's not as small as the A6300, which comes to a point that I feel like it's a little bit too small. So perfect size. Um, over here, I think there are some ports. The ports were open. Uh, I didn't open it. I think it just fell, it fell open during the, the tra transit. Um, so in the bottom is the, looks like the, the multi-link. Um, right over here and there's a super speed uh, USB type C and uh, what's on top of course your uh, HDMI port and your headphone set headphone jack um, I believe there's a few more ports hidden somewhere around here let's take a look so there's your microphone and oh nice a flash sync port and uh, which tells me that the camera should uh, appeal to a lot of uh, product photographers who shoots a lot of interior in studio shots and also portrait photographers as well um, but then again a lot of um, strobes nowadays is wireless so uh, basically you just want mount your wireless transceiver on the top instead of using the sync cord but still it's it's good to have the sync cord uh, of course on the on the top let's see look at the top of course there's your um, sensor location indicator and uh, there is a dial which had auto. I don't know what S and Q is silent and quiet, maybe. I don't know. Um, there is the uh, movie mode, looks like. And three custom functions. I'm kind of annoyed by the fact that I have to press this little button like uh, to turn, which, I mean, it doesn't really turn that easily. So it's really not necessary to have a button to lock it into place. So manual, uh, shutter priority, aperture, and program mode. And then of course there is a fully auto mode um, right here within reach. Very nice is a exposure, comp exposure compensation dial. Um, and in the front there is a little clicky wheel on the back. Second wheel right over here. Um, on the top there is uh, two custom buttons they are fairly tactile a little bit mushy but tactile and uh, easy to push and easily uh, within reach and of course the power button is integrated into the shutter the shutter itself it's metal aluminum really nicely brushed aluminum um, of course on the top you have your flash sync port I mean the hot shoe Let's see if I can open it it's kind of hard to open the multi-functional uh, flash port or something like that with a standard hot shoe contact. Um, so I believe I can add uh, the uh, the new Canon radio flashes um, to use with the camera. So um, this mark, I believe it's it means a Zeiss uh, T coating or something like that, which was uh, a really nice multi-layered coating uh, for the uh, eyepiece. And of course, this is an electronic viewfinder, so you're not going to see anything without the camera being open. Of course, the record button right over here. Excellent, very convenient. Um, the AF on button, the um, exposure lock. Um, and of course, those buttons are multifunctional, so I think if you're in the uh, different modes, it, you, it works differently. So I guess that's for uh, enlarging the picture uh, when you're previewing the pictures. Um, and here is a it feels like a five-way dial, which is excellent because on the uh, A6300, it doesn't have this dial and uh, choosing focusing point is kind of hard. So 
uh, with this, it's definitely going to help um, enhance the usability of the camera. Of course, here is a rotating dial with a central button. Uh, the button is uh, aluminum, and this button is plastic. So there's a function button. Um, of course, uh, this rotating dial also have a four-way uh, dial behind it. So you can adjust ISO, display settings, self-timer, um, uh, shooting modes. Uh, and of course, the delete button. I think it's being marked as custom button four. So I guess you can use this for something else as well. Um, the other button, custom three, is right over here. Default to lock lock the picture. Um, and of course, the one and two, as previously uh, mentioned in the review. Um, okay, so here are all the buttons that I see. Uh, of course, lens release is right over here. Very standard. Um, Opening the thing, wow, a beautiful sensor inside. Okay, and it's uh, what 42 megapixel, something like that. Um, so let's see, of course, this electronic viewfinder uh, looks very, very nice. Let me turn the camera on, of course. Um, the useful tilting flash, I mean, the tilting uh, LCD back. So, this is the highest it would ever go, like that. So I guess if you're shooting down low, um, this is quite helpful. And if you're actually shooting all the way up, it tilts all the way like that. It doesn't go anymore. So um, I guess if you're shooting all the way up, you can look at the at the LCD like that. Uh, again, as you can see, there are some um, unused spaces around the edge. I wish it, it fills uh, all the edges. But uh, again, it looks like it's a capacitive touch screen because there are some grid um, inside. So I know it's a touch screen. Um, turn on the camera, see if it's got any batteries, battery juice left inside. Which, uh, did I put the battery? No, I didn't even put the battery. Okay, let's take a look at the battery door. Um, standard battery door. The inside is all standard steel, looks like, or maybe aluminum. Uh, of course, memory slot. It's, um, it's operated by this little slide. Uh, I know it have dual slot and one supports uh, the type one and one supports uh, SD um, U, uh, something type two, uh, which means it's just faster. But I think any type one card would work. UHD type one and UHD type two. Anyway, any card would work um, as long as uh, the writing speed is fast enough. Okay, so I'm gonna the battery in and give it a spin so this is uh, it's not auto locking you have to manually lock it um, but this this door is it's it's auto locking so very nice uh, I think it's weather sealed um, let's see yep it's got some foam around um, all the important components um, so supposedly it should seal out uh, light rain and things like that but don't use it in a uh, downpour okay let's see um let me just uh unboxing a lens and then we'll put that lens on and take a quick look okay so we're using the most convenient uh my uh the standard 51.8 um Let's unbox this lens and just use it on the camera and, and take a look. And again, hopefully it have some juice inside. So this is a 50 millimeter, it's a Sony's uh, standard E-mount full frame lens. Um, from the from the feel of it, it feels very light. It's probably 100% plastic, um, but it doesn't matter. It's very easy and small and easy. Excuse me, small and easy to carry. So here's the lens. And of course, you have a whole bunch of manuals right over here. Take a look. It's just all the standard stuff. You probably don't don't need to take a look, but it's good to have all those extra materials. Um, it definitely feels like they care about this lens. Um, okay, so box aside. Let's take a look at the lens itself. Um, very very light very very plasticky um, without the um, without the cap without the hood I mean it's nice included the hood without the hood it's it's very compact 
I like it. Um, probably gonna use it a lot for just general use and carrying around. So a little lens cap, I'm just gonna attach it right now. It's a 46 millimeter, maybe 49 millimeter uh, lens thread, the uh, filter thread. So again, very tiny. Take a look. Um, I bought a filter which haven't arrived yet, but uh, usually for all the lens I buy, I just put a filter on it and uh, forget about using the caps. Okay, so here's the uh, the bottom part. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually mount this little little thing onto the A7R3. So let's align the dots. And I don't know which way I'm turning. Okay, so I'm turning uh, the opposite direction of what my Nikon lens are turning maybe it feels very tight the tolerance is very tight I'm almost afraid to turn it all the way but um, here you see the classic uh, Sony uh, mounting um, I guess the orange means full frame uh, which which looks cool okay and you know it's a Sony so okay let's open the camera first time turning on the camera maybe it's on yeah, all right, so it's on. Let, let me do a setup. Hopefully it have some uh, enough battery juice. Entry time, yes, New York. That sounds about right. And uh, daylight savings of time not set. Okay, let's set today's time. I think it's April 2nd. Uh, right now is 17.30. So time is set, format, I usually like to keep it as year, month, date. It's easier to organize. Um, all right, hold up the camera. Okay, so um, play memories. Okay, Let's see if the touch screen works. Nope, obviously uh, touch screen doesn't work here. Um, <laughs> that sucks. Okay, so I press okay and the camera is on. Uh, uh, the autofocus it's it's slightly noisy I mean that's okay uh, I get it it's a very budget lens and it definitely sounds different than um, let me open up the uh, Nika. I had a, a Sigma 50 1.4 art it's got a fully silent motor so um, Again, a few other Sigmas that I pre-ordered, it's going to come and arrive this way. And you can hear the, uh, the noise in, in the focusing mechanism. This one is not silent. So you can hear the, uh, you can hear the focus. But I mean, not too bad, not too annoying. It's, it's quiet, it's fairly quiet. And of course, um, let's take a quick look at the manual system. Again, this is not a full review. Um, I just want to see if they have improved on the manual uh, from my last Sony A6300, uh, which had a disastrous manual system that, that's hard to find anything. So, okay. From the review, I heard it's slightly better, and it looks so because um, at least right now it tells, it tells you of uh, a few different important settings within the category down here. I think this, the old Sony doesn't have it, which is nice. So, and it's crazy that it, it's got 14 tabs um, within just this one uh, shooting manual. So that that's called, um, yeah, it, so the tab over here corresponding to whatever's this way here. And unfortunately on top it doesn't tell you what this tab like what's under this tab so over here the second is uh, movies 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 shutter zoom display um, custom operation again the manual it I would say might have improved but it still sucks because it's not categorized as nice as say a 
a Nikon manual. Like it's it, the Nikon manual is so nice. It's so well organized. It's so easy to find all different kinds of stuff, and uh, it's just a joy to to use and configure. And uh, anybody who uses a Nikon or a Canon know the manual system is fantastic on those cameras. And I think that's one area Sony still needs to um, catch up on, which is to optimize the manual system. Um, but I think there is a custom settings which um, you can add some of the frequently used items here. For example, I probably want the AF settings to be uh, put in the um, custom menu, but again, it's crazy. It's got 32 tabs and that you have to go through 32 tabs to add the stuff you want. Of course, basically it includes all the stuff um, that was previously shown in the manual in the tabs. So you add, you add 14 plus 9 plus 2 plus 3 and 7, you get, I guess, 32 tabs that you can choose from here. Uh, which is a lot of things to go over, which I might just do under the, I mean, off the camera. Um, interesting thing is the battery come fully charged, which is nice. So gives me a little time to play around. Um, again, I have no card, so let me go grab a card and uh, we we'll just test the shutter sound and, and things like that. And then we'll finish off this. Oops. We'll finish off this review and, and unboxing some more lens and put it on here and give it a quick overview all right um, I just got a memory card I'm gonna put the memory card in test the sound of the shutter and I think the first thing I want to do okay that, that sucks um, I can't see what is uh, which card I'm using because you have to put the card in this way I don't know why they do that but that's kind of counterintuitive. I can't put the card in this way. Most other cameras I can just put card in this way. Okay, so put in the slot one. And the camera turns itself on. Let's see. There is a electronic viewfinder. Let's see if I can operate the viewfinder. It's kind of hard to see the... Let's see if it'll work try to get it to work but it's kind of smart now the old a6300 it's kind of dumb um, let me put the camera closer so the old 6300 um, the electronic viewfinder would turn off like immediately when you just suddenly touch it and things like that but this one I think you have to physically actually like holding it right over there for the electronic uh, viewfinder to work which I think is a great a great improvement because if you put it here and my yeah like you have to physically put your face close for it to work which I think it's great great improvement so first thing first um, I want to get out of JPEG mode I always use raw and I don't like compressed um, so JPEG quality usually leave it at extra high um, aspect ratio yes default okay good so quickly go over the menu and just set up some basic stuff focus mode so the, the thing I really want to try is the eye focus um, might have to do a demo later on um, and of course, uh, touch screen again doesn't work here. In F mode, you can set priorities on whether you want focus or release. Uh, both works in AFS and AFC. Interesting. Okay. So I start AF. What? interesting I don't know what this is for but it's grayed out it doesn't work with this lens all right uh, pre AF you can you can have the AF always on before you start shooting um, okay so test shutters test the shutter sound 
What? I inserted a memory card. Well, it looks like my memory card is not compatible with this camera, which is interesting. Maybe I should f format the memory card first. And I remember format should be set up somewhere. Yep, set up tab 5. And it's exactly the same as a 6300 where you just format right over there. So, and it's D14 to memory card slot 1. Okay, so it looks like I put things in slot 2 and it wants me to put the card in slot 1. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't allow me to start shooting. Interesting. Okay, so you have to have a card in slot 1, it looks like. And, um, okay, let me take some pictures. Okay, so review the picture. All right, so there's my cat. Uh, we just rescued. Uh, let's see if that zoom function works. Okay, I guess it works. Okay, so the preview is fairly quick. Um, and of course that f1.8 helps in a low light situation. And because uh, my room here is, is fairly fairly dark okay zoom in well not bad uh, see if there are some other features for example displays okay it does display some additional information volume setting what's that that's weird If I press down, it's, uh, it's a volume setting. Um, so in the shooting mode, I guess I can change ISO by pressing uh, on the right side. Sort of, oh, guess what? We're in uh, idiot proof auto mode. I want to get into um, aperture priority, my favorite. Okay, so uh, changing the aperture, of course, is the front dial. I believe you can customize it into uh, different dials. Uh, so let's try 1.8 and ISO. Right now it's set to auto. Um, I'm gonna let it run in auto. Uh, let's see what other features we have. So let's go into functions and see drive mode. Okay. I heard it's got a pretty fast continuous shooting mode, 10 FPS per second maybe, which is nice. Okay. So let's give it a try. Uh, some other modes. I want AFC and I want to try out that eye focus. So I guess I'm going to use uh, the default compensation, default metering, metrics. Okay, let's give it a try. Nice. All right, took a few more shots. Take a look. And uh, zoom it in. So it looks like it's slightly blurry because um, the shutter speed is pretty low. Um, it keeps that it keeps it at fiftieth of a second, and I can feel that internal uh, image stabilization at work when I press the shutter. It just it holds it steady, which is nice. 
right? So that's good. Um, again, I'm sorry because this is my first time holding this camera. Uh, I'm sure I'll do a uh, fairly thorough review later on or go through the manual system. Right now I'm just playing around. Um, and I haven't figured out how to turn that IAF on, which I really want to try. So how about we try shutter speed mode priority and just keep the shutter speed high. Let's keep it at a thousand. Oh, if I keep it at a thousand, it's going to ISO 10,000. That's crazy. My room is really, my room is really, really dark. And I know it also have a electronic shutter mode, which is quiet. So, let's see if I can find it. So there's a high plus, which I believe is uh, is the fastest mode. Single shooting. Um, find some other adjustment settings. So apparently you can prioritize media. So. Um, when I didn't set it, it goes default to one. When I don't have the card in one, it just tells me no card. Um, I want to quickly find the setting for, there's a little bit of a lag going through the manuals um, that I can feel, which I don't feel on my Nikon camera. There is no lag at all in the settings. Um, so something to keep in mind. So it's, it's got focus settings. I'm not sure, it may be for fine tuning the focus. Um, vertical, horizontal, area, swap. Mm, don't know what this is for. So yeah, again, um, I'm gonna go through manual settings later on in a different video. And uh, I just tested this 50, 1.8. It's a general use lens. It, it's got a fairly quick aperture and it locks onto things so let's see take a look it locks onto things very nicely and so that was single mode let's see if I can make it into super high speed mode. All right, so super high speed mode. Take a few pictures. Oh, yeah, that is quick. All right. It's, and when it tells you it's saving pictures, how many pictures you've took, it is fast. It is too fast to my taste, so I'm gonna turn it down. All right. So I think a medium continuous focusing speed is acceptable. All right, so I don't waste any of the resources because this is a huge, this is a, a huge megapixel camera. And uh, I am pretty sure it's gonna be twice the storage memory um, needed for the same picture compared to my uh, Nikon D500. Um, let's see, okay, cool. Um, I would say the 50mm 1.8, good for general use. Uh, again, I don't like this kind of a noisy uh, autofocusing system. Um, it's too noisy. So, um, there you have it. Let's uh, open up the other lens and take a look. So, okay, turn off the camera. Have a whole bunch of stuff now I have a lot of lens caps and things okay I'm not gonna put away the lens but oh, no. 
adopts a different lens this time. So how about the 90 millimeter um, f2.8 macro lens? Okay. All right, let's see. And again, very standard Sony packaging. Um, a whole bunch of manuals. The bubble wrap, usually, and of course, on some of the better lens, it gives you a nice uh, leatherette case. Which is thoughtful. Okay, all right, put away packaging material, and let's take a look at the lens. a lens hook inside. Take a closer look. Um, the lens barrel is constructed of um, metal. It's all metal. Uh, this one feels slightly chunkier than the 50 millimeter um, 1.8. But again, the 50 meter 1.8 is, um, let's see. It is also much cheaper. This one I got it for 190 some dollars. Uh, and this one, when it was on sale last month, it's um, 900 some dollars. Um, so definitely a price difference over there. Uh, build quality, again, um, I would say decent. It still feels lighter than the Nikon um, 100, uh, 105 millimeter macro that I had, um, but it's this this lens looks more modern. It looks more futuristic, um, and this area, it's it's actually all metal. The focusing ring is metal. So take a closer look. Hopefully it focuses. Here we go. Um, AF, MF, you just do that to switch. So it goes top is AF, goes down is manual focusing mode with the indicator right over here. It's not a internal indicator, but a external one. So the filter thread, I believe it's 67, I believe. Okay, so let me find a 67 millimeter filter. Just unboxing, unbox the whole bunch of stuff. So a lot of things on the table. So I have a 67 millimeter Helia filter. Let's see if it's the right size. Nope. It's probably a 62. So again, I have a 62 millimeter filter. I have accumulated a lot of filters over the years. So. And usually this is the first thing I do is um, just put the filter on all the new lens I buy. So there you, there you go. Nice filter on there. I don't have to worry about uh, getting the front elements dirty. Um, of course over here, standard, a lot of macro lens have a range limiter and this one also has it. Um, optical steady shot on and off. I think if you turn it on, it works um, on two axes in the lens and the rest in the camera. So let's just switch out the lens. I have to get used to like um, the opposite direction of changing the lens from my Nikon cameras. Now the nice thing about those Sony lens is that the, uh, the rear element is so recessed that I wouldn't have to worry about accidentally touching them. On a lot of Nikon lens, it's so close that to a point I was afraid to touch the lens. Okay, so again, align and rotate. Now I have this macro lens installed. First thing first, let's see if it's a silent focusing motor or not. Now I surely hope it's silencing focus motor. 
install the default HUD. Okay, so um, I just took this uh, Sony uh, A7R3 and the 90 millimeter macro lens around the house and took some pictures and uh, I have to say I'm quite impressed by the um, overall responsiveness of the camera. Um, <clears throat> I know it's got a huge uh, image sensor and uh, the, the shooting time, the, the, the time from when you open the power to you can start shoot, it's, it's about a few seconds um, compared to the Nikon. Uh, which is almost instantly so you basically you turn it on and you can shoot and for the Sony you have to Let's see so see how fast I can shoot So turn it on Yeah, that's 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 about how fast they can shoot. Let's see the Nikon So I'm gonna turn it on and start shooting Turn it on Oh, no cards um, but um, I, I can tell you right away Nikon is immediately turned on you can start shooting without any delay at all um, so that I think the Sony have to improve um, in terms of focusing on this 90 millimeter uh, macro uh, it's it's uh, focus it's focused by wire um, it's not actually linked to the focusing mechanism like when you turn here it's linked electronically, uh, which is interesting because they implemented a physical indicator, but it's actually electronically focused. Um, and um, to switch from the manual to autofocus is really, really easy and convenient. Of course, uh, you have this button over here, which you can customize. Um, I actually set it default to um, enable IAF. I finally figured out um, to use IAF and this is one thing really disappointing um, it doesn't track animal it doesn't track animal faces so when I was uh, trying to shoot my cats uh, let's see try to delete some empty pictures so when I try to focus on my cats and again this is when I was just taking the camera walk around and take a picture of my cats um, I have to manually focus on the eye because it's the, the IAF doesn't work for the cats, unfortunately. Um, it only works on human. So, um, in, let's see, in, in those examples, it's, um, it's all manual, manually focused onto the eye by selecting a focus point. Um, and in this picture, my wife, um, actually, the eye focus worked. Um, it, it it very fastly detected the eye, and then it focused onto the the front eye, which is fantastic. Um, so I know the IAF works, and um, in terms of the in terms of it works for the for the animals. Unfortunately, not. Um, you have to manually focus. But again, as you can see, I had a lot usable images from the cats around the house and they all work fantastically um, I mean for 90% of the time it actually focused onto the eye um, I have no complaints over there um, again if I just zoom it in and again I, I have to get used to this huge huge pixel um, increase from my old camera um, which this is just fantastic um, again all the eyes are in focus there is no doubt about that maybe this one this one I used a continuous focus and it just picks up whatever's in the front so the cat's nose was in focus in the front um, this is one of the uh, few earlier shots and this one actually it's the eye is not in focus because again it's continuous focus and I think the priority for that is to focus on things in the front um, but very beautiful bouquet from um, this 90 millimeter lens and uh, I th I'm pretty sure it's gonna do great in uh, product photography um, in the studio and of course it's gonna work 
very good for macro photography if you're shooting um, plants um, and insects uh, out in the wild. So definitely a huge plus to this lens. Um, and I want to go back to um, to the other lens that I just unboxed, which is the uh, 50 millimeter 1.8. Um, this lens is fairly cheap. It's less than $200 and I was playing around with the lens on the camera uh, I have to say it's not my favorite kit lens because this lens focuses fairly slow it focuses fairly loud it feels like a yesterday's technology um, on a three thousand dollar camera body so I wouldn't recommend you getting this lens even though it, it's got 1.8 the bokeh is okay um, the, the, bl the background blur is okay and again focus is really slow so half of the time while I'm trying to focus, the subject already walked away, like my cat's already walked away, uh, while it's still trying to hunt for that focusing point. Not good. So I'm going to think about just use this as a last minute backup and never have to pick it up again when I get my Sigma uh, art lenses uh, in my arsenal. And uh, uh, But it's super, super light. so. It doesn't hurt to have it around just in case something fails um, but again the 50 millimeter 1.8 is not my favorite lens um, but this one the FE 90 millimeter 2.8 uh, G lens it's definitely it definitely works fantastic uh, all metal construction fairly solid um, and I have no complaint about this lens the, oh, again it's uh, silence focusing so uh, same with the uh, Sigma Art, they all doesn't make any noise when when they are focusing. So turn on the AF. I'm focusing now, and it's hard to focus, and it's focusing now. So you don't hear any sound, uh, which is a, a a huge plus. So excellent. Now we actually move on to the next lens, which is my last lens for unboxing for for this video. Um, that is the super wide angle. Uh, it's not a 2.8, but it's actually a f4 constant aperture. Uh, it's Sony's G FE 20, 12 to 24 millimeter uh, super wide angle lens. And uh, uh, go ahead and open the packaging. And again, I would assume they all gonna be very similar compared to the lens that I just unboxed. So very very standard fare the bubble wrap all your manuals right over here and inside is your lens um, with a like I mean storage in a pouch and again I'm not gonna be using those pouches so because the lens is mostly just gonna be sitting in my camera bag okay, more plastic um, open it up. Mm, very nice um, this one, uh, it's a G lens, but it's plastic barrel over here and everything's plastic. Same construction quality as this super cheap uh, 50 meter 1.8. Um, but I think the advantage of this lens, let's put everything aside. Is that it's a 12 millimeter super wide angle. Uh, I had my, uh, I j actually just sold my Nikon uh, uh, 14 to uh, 24 2.8 in. This one is to replace that. Um, again, I don't need 2.8 on super wide angle because it's only used for um, interior architectural photography. Um, so it's, it's not used for portraits and anything like that. So it's, it's, it's got an f4 which is decent because I always going to have the aperture turned down to f8 and smaller for those interior shots. Construction wise, again all plastic. Um, the focusing ring and the zoom ring however feels very smooth. Um, nice to the touch as well. It doesn't feel as, as solid as, uh, as a Sigma art. This feels solid because of, again the, the barrel is metal, even though this part is pl excuse me this this part is plastic, same as this one. The barrel is plastic. Um, you can see that the focusing um, the rubber almost feels like sand, 
from Sony and Sigma, which is interesting. Um, so, so um, again, I'm gonna okay. So, uh, when downside, I guess for most of the wide angle lens is that you can't use a standard filter because the front element is gigantic. Um, this one you have to use a custom filter. Uh, I think some companies makes it. I'll post the link in the description if you are interested in installing a UV or polarizer on this lens. Um, and the interesting thing is that um, this works. This cap works fantastic because it works better than the Nikon cap because it actually clicks into the place and locks in there. Um, let's see, what, how does the mechanism work? Yeah, I think it locks somewhere from the inside over there. Um, there is a ring for for this cap to lock. So once it's locked, it doesn't it doesn't fall off. The Nikon one, it's uh, it's by suction, so it doesn't have this click, and it would just fall off sometime. Uh, so this is uh, a plus for the Sony. So let's actually take off the uh, 90 millimeter and mount onto mount this camera and, and do some test shots, and I'll come back and update on my uh, quick opinion about the super wide angle lens. very very light lens um, I didn't get the the G master because I actually needed the 12 millimeter instead of the uh, the 16 or the 14 that the G master offers um, again let me test the uh, focus so is this in manual interestingly this one focuses much, much faster than the um, than the the G ninety millimeter macro. I mean, it's understandable because this is a macro lens. You don't want like amazingly fast AF, but this one focuses super fast. Okay, it locks on almost instantly, which is great. Um, and again, because there is no subject, I can't use IAF. To use IAF, you have to assign it to a button. So, for example, over here, I assign it to auto exposure lock. Um, if it finds a face and I press this button, it locks onto the face and the eye, uh, which is great. So, the wow, this is like super, super wide. It's like it takes an entire picture of of the front of the camera, like extremely wide. Uh, again, I can see some light fall off, but again, uh, very easily corrected in post. And here's my cat right in front of me. I can get the whole picture of the cat, <laughs> even though it's like just a few feet right in front of me. So take a look. Got the whole cat in the picture, and this is Fluffy investigating. Okay, so again, focusing super, super quick. I think I'm already in love with this lens and it's gonna be a very versatile lens for uh, landscape photography and general travel as well. I, I, would, I would definitely take this lens with me um, along with my backup 50 meter 1.8. And again, this lens is not cheap. It's um, I think $1,600 um, on sale which I bought it a few a few weeks ago and now the price jumps back up to $700 uh, sorry uh, $1,700 um, again not a cheap lens but it's plastic and I'm okay with plastic because it's it's very light it it feels great with this like tiny full frame camera body um, I love it so this is my last um, this is my last lens unboxing, along with my brand new Sony a7R3. Um, again, I think the very, very last thing I'm going to unbox would be the um, camera strap for my new camera. So let's take out the camera strap and take a look. So I'm going to just leave this lens right on the camera and put it aside. Again, the slight light. If you see my previous uh, review for the actual, the original slide version three, uh, it's much, uh, it's much wider 
and this one is thinner. The basic design and the principle is the same. It's, it's got this quick adjustable aluminum ring, aluminum buckle that you can adjust the length. Um, so interestingly, um, all the all the slide light version 3 you receive is going to have the seal kind of open. And again, I think it's a manufacturing um, problem. It's not because that this camera strap was used. I think a lot of people were complaining in the reviews that, you know, their their thing was open, but it, it is brand new. Um, it's, it's never been used. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, let's open the, open the slide and take a look. Since I already reviewed it earlier, um, I'm just gonna actually, let's see, I'm just gonna actually quickly take it out and put it on the camera. Interestingly, um, the the pouch is different from um, from the uh, the slide original slide. The original slide had a black pouch, which this one actually feels a little bit better. Um, again, comes with almost the same content, so it comes with the extra uh, little tab. Of course, this to put the little quick adjuster onto your camera so you can mount it onto one of the camera strap and one on the tripod hole. Um, pouch aside and of course the actual camera camera strap is right over here. The slide light again it's it's less wide than the original slide so I'm gonna take it out and take a quick look. I honestly don't like those kind of uh, fancy packaging. I, I wish they would just conserve energy and make it simpler and less flashy. And it takes a long time to um, to actually unbox, which is crazy. I guess if you're that kind of person that likes to unbox stuff, this is definitely for you, but I just want to be able to take my stuff out and start using it. Um, okay, all the junks aside, Take a look at the camera strap. I'm gonna take my original um, take my original strap out and do a comparison. So first thing first, of course, install this onto my Sony camera. Super super easy. Basically you just hook and loop. Like that. So the tab is finished installing on the other side. Again, I love this camera system because I can quickly swap around cameras on the same strap. And done. Uh, now next step is actually attach the buckle, the little tab onto your actual strap. And uh, this area is metal, holded by a plastic piece. It's very sturdy. I don't foresee it getting broke anytime soon. Uh, again, little design details. Uh, with an adjustable buckle right over here. It's overall, it looks very, very nice. So I'm actually gonna just pre-adjust it. Get it a little bit shorter. And uh, um, one thing it's missing from the um, actual original slide is the padded area. So the original slide, I have it right over here. As you can see, the original had a padded area and, and this one doesn't, but it's retaining the uh, silicone uh, anti-slippery material right over here in the center area. Um, in terms of uh, width, you can see how wide the original is compared to the slight light. Okay, um, let's put it on. I'm gonna tell you my uh, general feeling once I have the camera on my neck and let you guys know All right, so now it's installed as you can see super quick to install again those uh, those uh, system is uh, super easy to adjust as well so it feels very sturdy and it feels in general it feels very comfortable um, I know you probably can't see me right now but 
I tell you, it's very comfortable. Um, compared to the original slide, I think I prefer the original slide in terms of comfortability. Mm, I say. In terms of comfort, I would definitely choose the original slide. But in terms of the portability, um, I would choose the, the slide light. Um, again, both is going to work very well. And uh, it's just that the extra comfort, extra padding on the original slide actually um, helps quite a lot, especially during a long shooting session. Um, and of course, um, this one is much well suited for uh, larger cameras. Uh, for now, I don't have any larger cameras, but maybe in the future when um, I have all those gigantic Sigma f1.4 um, art lenses, I'll start considering uh, replacing the slide light with just the regular slide. Uh, for now, I think this little camera strip camera strap would work fantastically uh, for my needs. Again, super easy to adjust um, and lock. It's like, it's it's almost effortless. Um, I don't have to think, I just flip the knob and adjust. Uh, some little detail, there's a uh, silicon PD, uh, Peak Design logo. Again, very, very nicely made. Uh, it has become one of my favorite camera strap to use um, around all my cameras. So if you guys are interested, I will have a link in the description below on how to get it. Of course, you can save your extra tabs and uh, uh, tripod mount for future use. And uh, so I think this would sum up um, this quick unboxing of quite a lot of the lenses and camera. So if you guys have any questions, specific questions regarding any of the item that I just unboxed, do feel free to comment in the comment section below. Um, again. In the near future, I'm going to do a quick manual walkthrough for all the manual settings in this camera. And then I'll tell you my uh, general use impression uh, for the camera as well, because I have a product photo shoot coming up <coughs> this weekend. And I'll definitely give you guys some input on, on my experience. So again, thank you so much for watching uh, this unboxing video. Um, and I hope you guys uh, find this video useful. If you do, please hit like or subscribe and I'll be very grateful. Um, and of course, I will continue to put out more contents like this uh, in the future. And again, thank you so much and bye-bye.